All right, guys. Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes: Trails of Cold Steel, the finale. Yup, it's been seven weeks, but we have finally reached it. Last time we left off, well, we had some fun at the concert. We danced a bit, and then, well, shit went down. The Guerrilla Fortress was basically annihilated, and now, well, we found Million. She went missing for a bit. But we couldn't find Crow, so let's continue the search for him. He has to be around here somewhere. No new dialogue, no one moved any other place other than maybe something, but I don't really <laughs> think I'm going to waste time with that right now. So let's head into town. Okay, so are we gonna track down Crow? Might as well. I guess we should start with the dorms first. Maybe Sharon knows where he's gone. Okie dokie! Seems like the most logical conclusion. But first of all, I might as well talk to a few people. By a few, I mean Misht. Maybe he has some crossbow news. Well, yes, the Chancellor will be holding his speech in a few hours. We'll be listening to that. Oh, I wasn't expecting to see either of you back so early. Welcome home. Hello again, Sharon. We're back! Seems all of your classes have been cancelled today. I heard from Lady Sarah that you would be remaining on the campus, though. Well, that was the plan. Say, Crow hasn't been back here, has he? Master Crow? Well, actually, he just returned a short while ago. Oh, he did? Indeed. However, I don't believe he stayed long. It seems he was here just long enough to go to his room, then he left again. Sounds like we just missed him. Maybe he forgot something here and came back to pick it up? Hmm, I don't know. Should we check his room just in case? Yeah, might as well while we're here. <laughs> well, if you need anything, just let me know. Still, don't you think his room's awfully... tidy? I mean, for Crow. Well, he was supposed to be moving out of here fairly soon. He must have been doing some cleaning. Anyway, it's almost noon. I guess we just have to head back to the classroom empty-handed for now. Yep, it's almost time for Gramps' speech. Still, I wonder where Crow went. Yeah. There's nowhere else around here I haven't checked, is there? Maybe he's at the bar, we haven't checked really. Eh, some of his stuff is still here, so... But his jacket is gone for some reason. Let's quickly check the cafe and then maybe he's here. And maybe we just missed him. Well, no one is mentioning him, so I guess not.
Oh, it's you. Patrick, what are you doing here? I thought you would have gone back home. Well, we don't have any classes today, so I was just resting in my room. Sure, I've been told to return home. Repeatedly at this point. But as a member of the Four Great Houses, what dignity would I have were I to turn tail and run home at a time like this? Don't underestimate me, Schwarzer. Oh, wow! Wouldn't dream of it. Is Class 1 planning on listening to the National Address, too? We are. Personally, I can't stand the man, but we are in the middle of a national crisis. Those of us who elected to remain at the Academy are having a radio set up to hear the broadcast together. Ah, uh, right. You've got some strange classmates, though. Especially that second year. I know Heimdall's not all that far from Trista, but I'm not sure why he'd bother going to hear the speech in person. What are you talking about? That crow fellow. I met him outside the station this morning. Huh, really? Oh, he didn't tell you? When I inquired, he said he wanted to hear the Chancellor's speech in person. Huh. I wouldn't have expected him to suddenly take an interest in politics. Well, at least we know where he went now. I haven't a clue what you're babbling on about. Anyway, it's almost noon now. Shouldn't you be running along? You'll miss the broadcast. Oh, yeah, you're right. Let's get going, Milliam. Everyone else is waiting in the classroom. Okay. The clock's about to strike noon in Heimdall, with the Chancellor set to take the stage for his national address. With the situation in Crossbell and the destruction of Gorelia Fortress still fresh in the national consciousness, the message he has today will undoubtedly shape the future of Erebonia and with it, our lives. Our reporter is joining us now, live from Dreykel's Plaza. Sounds like he's about to start. <clears throat> I hate this. I've got butterflies in my stomach. This is Misty, coming to you live from Heimdall. Huh? Why is Misty... Oh, it's the host from Oppentime. At least that's a reassuring voice to hear at a time like this. How? Emma? What's wrong? The, the woman talking on the radio, she's... You all know her? Who, Misty? Of course. She hosts the radio show Aubin Time every Sunday night at 9. I've seen her out and about in Trista, too. She always looks so fashionable. Though, considering Aubin Time is broadcast by Radio Trista, it makes sense that's where she'd be. Huh? Do you know her or something? The Chancellor's standing at the podium, and it looks like he's about ready to begin. Let's hear what he has to say. Citizens of Heimdall, fellow countrymen, Erebonians far and wide, I thank you for your attention. I am Gilead Osborne, your Chancellor and the acting representative of the Imperial Government. We stand today in the face of an uncertain future. All of you, I'm sure, are aware of what has transpired in recent weeks. Crossbell, our erstwhile province, has defiantly declared its independence. And as its parting shot, frozen the assets entrusted to them 
by the hard-working men and women of Erebonia. As we have moved to safeguard our national interests, armed conflicts have broken out on our borders. Our enemies point to this as an example of Erebonian aggression, but nothing could be further from the truth. We acted in accordance with our duties as a colonial power. All we have done, we have done as is our sovereign right. The Imperial Hand may be firm, but it is fair. These traitors, however, have shown the world that they are neither. With an unknown weapon of mass destruction, they have annihilated Gorelia Fortress, the stronghold that has long protected the very gates of this country. I ask you, brothers and sisters of the Empire, do we allow such an odious act to go unpunished? Do we sit idle as the pride and dignity of our great nation is spat upon and trampled underfoot? We cannot, we must not, and we will not. With blood and with iron, we shall meet out justice. Mete out justice, okay. Listen to him go. Oh, he's quite the orator, that's for sure. <laughs> well, he's certainly not out to upend my expectations. Milliam? What are you doing? Hmm. Nope, can't get through. No surprise there, I guess. Who are you trying to call? What is all this about? Oh, it's part of my mission. The most important part, actually. If only I'd caught on a little sooner. But considering he managed to outwit Claire, Lecter, and even Gramps, I suppose Crows earned this victory. What? What does Crow have to do with this? Huh. So that's your angle. You came because you had a potential lead on C, and you couldn't look into it from the outside. Is that it? What? As in the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front? But he's dead, isn't he? The Intelligence Division looked at all of C's actions so far and drew up a list of potential suspects. And one possibility we couldn't dismiss was that he had ties to this academy somehow. But after C and his cronies got blown up aboard their airship in the mine, we thought it was a moot point. Looks like we spoke too soon, though. Oh, I can't believe how bad we screwed this up. Uh, are you seriously suggesting that it's Crow? That it's been him all along? Crow was with us in the mine right up until he went with the miners to escort them back to the surface, right? Yeah, and then his route back ended up blocked off by a cave-in, so he wasn't able to reach us until later. But, but what if he actually used another route to get there ahead of us? Then fought us wearing that masked helmet and cape. Before making it look like he boarded the airship, then sneaking back around to join the others like nothing happened. Madness. No one would stake their entire plan on such a precarious stunt. Perhaps we can read the evidence that way, but there are a few leaps in logic that bother me. Besides, remember when the terrorists escaped from Gorelia Fortress? We heard C talking to us. And not just then. He was addressing us just before the airship exploded in the mine, too. That's true, on both counts. And Crow was with us the whole time during everything that went down in Gorelia. He never left our sight. Right. No mistaking it. My name is Seath, leader of the Imperial Liberation Front. 
The hammer of judgment shall fall again. I'm ready. Are you? Yeah, there's no way he could be... He could have recorded a message in advance and played it back. Oh. And the airship that exploded? It could have been controlled remotely. His alibi seems airtight. But once you account for things like that, it starts looking pretty questionable. Yep. And if C's still alive, that means the other ringleaders probably are too. I mean, sure, it might seem bad, but these are really just what-ifs. It's not really a concrete evidence for any of this. Then right now, Crow is... Oh no. He said he was headed to Draco's Plaza, didn't he? If a skilled sniper has their eye on you, you let your guard down for even a second and bang, you're dead. If he's the one who shot down the airship in the mine... Then it's checkmate for the Chancellor. Crow's already won. We stand at the brink of nothing less than a national crisis. In such tumultuous times, we must set aside our differences. We must look past the ideologies that divide us. I will not deny the rift that has grown between the reformist and noble factions, especially in recent times. But how childish, how insignificant such squabbles seem when the enemy marshals its strength beyond our borders. I have met with His Majesty the Emperor and have secured permission to embark on the course we now must. Thus, in the name of the Emperor and as the representative of the Imperial Government, I hereby proclaim your speech in hell. That's gonna leave a scratch. Uh, well played, Armbrust. Well, that was anticlimactic. And there's our coup de gras. Now, just have to add the finishing touches. Hands in the air! It truly is him. It really was you all along. To think, all the time we spent searching for the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front, and he was right under our noses. Crow Armbrust from the Jirai SEZ. Oh, and here I thought I'd managed to cover my tracks like a real pro. So, who put all the pieces together? I bet it was Arundel, wasn't it? We just received confirmation a short while ago. If you hadn't been so difficult to pin down, we would have had this investigation finished up already. How could you? How could you? You know, this really brings back the memories. It's a lot like when Jirai was annexed by the Empire eight years ago. You let your guard down, you lose. That's how your boss's favorite little game works, isn't it? Well, he lost. 
And now he won't be playing any of his games again. Ever. Y you Get on the ground! I don't know how you managed to plan all of this, but you'll tell us eventually. I'll see to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. What? I really like what they did with the voice transitioning from the radio to, uh, well, basically a real voice. Wait, what's she talking about? Was... was she speaking directly to us just now? Resound, resound, O oh voice everlasting! Rend night's silent veil and reveal unto all the beautiful world! What the? Isn't that the plaza in Heimdall? This is one of the Azure Abyss's incantations! Phantasmagoria! That sure is a bird. By the way, for some reason this is an AVI file. I don't know why. Yep, that's pretty big. The Pantagruel. Those look somewhat like the machine we found at the old schoolhouse, don't they? So much for the Aktsen units. Fire! 
Where did it? What are those things? Humanoid combat armors, courtesy of Reinford's 5th Development Division, staunch supporters of the Noble Alliance. Knights for the modern age, modeled after a stunning historical example and made of hardened steel from toe to crown. We call them the Panzer Soldats. But how did... Don't move! Sorry, I don't take orders from you. Zephyr should be able to secure Valflame Palace just fine on their own. But I've got my own score to settle. No! What? <laughs> See ya, Icy Maiden. I'll give him an A for effort. But we're talking about the Imperial Capital here? Is that the best they could muster on their home turf? Yeah, they screwed up his text box here a bit. Oh well. You remember this voice actor? He's Junpei, actually, from the Zero Escape games. This is like his third gig as a voice actor. The hard part's still ahead. Most of the Imperial armies putting out fires across the country. But they'll be back soon enough now. And who knows? They might have some anti-soldats countermeasures up their sleeves. <laughs> hey, anything can happen. Guess the ones to watch out for are the 3rd, 4th, and 7th armored divisions, huh? I wonder whose side our little princess will take. That's for Fee to decide. The boss would have wanted that way. Guess Zephyr is still around. Splendidly done, Grianos. I see you were able to share the sweetest notes of my aria with our little friends. I find myself reminded afresh of the brilliance with which you shine as the second anguis. Well, I guess this confirms it. We talk to Tilda is the second Anguis, which whom we have heard talk in Trails in the Sky the Third, although not voiced. Lady Vida Clotilde. Vast is the stage, and beauty is the performance of the Azure Abyss. <laughs> That's quite the compliment. Still, first the Burl. Then Crossbell, and now here in Erebonia. Don't you think you're getting a little too greedy for your own good? Oh, your chastisement cuts deep. We'll be proceeding with the next step of the Phantasmal Blaze plan, I presume? 
Hmm. Yes, indeed. The bells are tolling for Crossbell, and preparations here are complete. Still, even this grand an undertaking is but a jewel in a greater crown. The second stage of the Orpheus' final plan. The symphony awaits us. Let the second movement commence. There is that name again, Phantasmal Blaze. Is this really happening? It is. I'm certain of it. Phantasmagoria is an arcane art known to the Witch of the Abyss, capable of showing scenes and visions across great distances. The woman you know as Misty is... something of a sister of mine. Wait, the Witch of the Abyss? Are you saying that's who Misty really is? I feel like any moment I'm going to wake up in my bed to find I just dreamt all this. If only it was. But we have no choice but to accept that it's real. Well, we'll have plenty of time to worry about that later. Right now we've got two more pressing concerns. The Chancellor's been shot, and Heimdall's been occupied. Oh no! I hope my father's alright. Damn! Please, let St. Astraea be safe. That gargantuan airship. Those Panzer soldats. I have no doubts that they were bankrolled and manufactured by the noble faction. I saw them there. My old family. All this time I never knew what happened to them. And how there they are. Fee. So you know those men? I remember meeting them briefly in the Grail. They're former members of Zephyr. Used to be one of the continent's strongest Jaeger corps. It looks like the Noble Faction hired them to do their dirty work, just like the Imperial Liberation Front. On top of that... It looks like our guess about C's identity was right on the money. But I don't know what that cool blue thing was he flew off in. Crow, why did you do it? On behalf of the Student Council, I'd like to ask all of you to remain calm. I'm sure you all experienced that strange vision during the broadcast. And the principal has an announcement he'd like to make about it. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Principal Van Dyke speaking. I'm sorry to say there's a strong likelihood that what you just saw is really happening in Heimdall. However, it's important to note that we don't yet have confirmation or any official word on the situation. I'm doing all I can to find out what's going on, but in the meantime, I ask for your patience and understanding. So all the other classes saw it too. How could she use a national radio broadcast to show something to just us and no one else? Is that even possible? For her, it is, with little difficulty at that. Yo, Sarah here. Who's... Nightheart? An emergency meeting. Right away? What? Of course, I'll be right there. Yeah, understood. I'll meet you in front of the main gate. Alright, class. I've got to step out for a bit to take care of some business. But no matter what happens, you are not to leave this building. Is that clear? What's going on? I'm not sure, but it's obvious something strange is happening. Can this day even get stranger than it already is? What's wrong, guys? I hear something to the west, and it's getting closer. Several armored cars are approaching, and... It sounds like they have some of those armored suits with them. You've got to be kidding. First Heimdall, now Trista? Are they planning on taking over the Academy? Hmm, sure looks that way. Notable members from both factions have kids enrolled here, 
and there are plenty of important people like the principal. So either they're looking to preemptively protect their own or take the others hostage. Could be either, even both. This is absurd. Whatever their intentions, we can't allow them to harm innocent people. Do you think that's where the instructors went? To try and fight them off? Those giant armors tore through the army's tanks like they were nothing more than toys. Our instructors are strong, but with what they're up against, I'm worried they might not be enough. I'm not sure how much help we'd be, or if we'll even be able to put a dent in them. But right now, they need all the support they can get. They need Class 7. I'm with you. You have my sword. I didn't really wake up today planning to fight enemies that can gut a tank. None of us did. But this battle came to us, so we'll draw the line here. I'll do everything I can to defend this school and its students. Duh. I take no issue with humbling those that befoul the spirit of true nobility. Guess I'll help too. <laughs> I wonder how Lamy will match up against those giants. We haven't got a lot of time, so let's move out. All right, let's do this! Elisa? Why are you all so flustered? What's going on? Ferris? You're still here? What in Adios' name is going on here? I saw the instructors leaving the academy through the front gate. Oh, they already left? Patrick, you have to stay here. You can't let them take over this building. Work with the other students as best you can. Schwarza? What are they? Looks like the teachers evacuated the town as best as they could. doing here y you aren't you're not planning on going to help the instructors are you that's exactly what we are planning I'd bring shame to the Arsade name if I were to willingly allow such insolence and dishonor to fester we're not gonna push our luck but we want to give them every little bit of support we can you can't be serious if that video is anything to go by you'd be going up against some seriously dangerous weapons the chances of you overcoming a force like that is... Well, I don't even want to say. Are you really sure this is what you want to do? We are. This academy has given us a lot. We've made friends to here. Learned to better ourselves. And we'll be damned if we are going to let them just take that away. You guys... Oh boy. The instructors told me not to let you pass if you tried to come through here. All right. As student council president, I hereby grant you permission to head through. But don't forget, you're still students. This may be a military academy, but that doesn't mean you're soldiers. If you ever feel like your lives are in danger, even a little bit, you get out of there, okay? Run away, surrender. I don't care what you do, just please, please don't die out there. Promise me. Of course. We promise. At least make sure you've got everything you need before you go, then. I've got my tools on me, so if you guys need any last-minute modifications to your Arcus units, I'll take care of it. All right, well, it's time to choose our final party. Of course, we can change it later, but oh well. I'm just going to bring the same people I brought to the final dungeon, since they are the best leveled. But before we move out, we do have to do two little things. First of all, let's head back into the main building. 
and talk to Vivian Lind. And with that, if we head over the, the tractor profiles, everyone should be filled in. This sure took a while. And yeah, as I said previously, I missed it, Makarov's one, but it really doesn't matter. Let me just quickly check something. I actually never checked this out, if it's true or not. Oh, you can head back into the old school house. Okay, so be sure to use those shining palms to make your life a lot easier coming up here. It's really hard to believe, huh? He even tried to attack Crossbell. I'm gonna beat it out of him if I must. Alright, well if you have any last minute preparations, well George can help you, out, help you out with that, but I don't really need anything. And if we want to leave, just talk to the gate. Um, one thing you might want to unequip the Angel Master Quartz, it's just going to get in the way. May Adios be with you. And just a little speculation from me, but looking at their design, you should aim for their joints. Take them apart at their weakest points and you might have a chance. I see. Then let's pray our aim is true. repeating myself at this point, but don't go doing anything crazy, you hear? Still, I know in my heart how much you want to protect this school. So do what you think you have to do. Not just for us, but so that whatever ends up happening, you'll know you gave the best you had to give. That's good. sure didn't waste any time. It seems the battle's already underway. There, toward the west exit. Let's move! Impossible! Are you even human? Oh, I'm as human as they come. Can't speak for the principal, though. Or Instructor Beatrix, for that matter. I'll say. 
our decorated veterans are putting the younger generation to shame. Now, now. There's no need to go around flattering old ladies, Nightheart. Ah, no need to be so modest, Beatrix. I don't know of any other old ladies who could reduce an armored car to a smoldering wreck that quickly. <laughs> says the man who cut one in half. <laughs> Always nice to share a little outing with my wonderful colleagues. And while we're at it, since when were the two of you such whizzes with all those high-level arts? Especially you, Thomas. When did you leave the library long enough to become so disturbingly proficient with an orbal staff? <laughs> well, you know me. I've always been rather taken with the mages of the Middle Ages. Th they're monsters! Sir, we don't stand a chance against them! You don't stand a chance against anyone. Ah, oh, stop your whining! They did this? By themselves? I almost feel sorry for the soldiers. Um, just who is Instructor Beatrix? She was a colonel in the Imperial Army. They used to call her the Reviver. Heard she saved Sarah's life once, even. Yeah, she's kind of a legend. In her days with the Medical Corps, she'd show up in war zones to treat the critically injured. She'd patch them all up, friend or foe! And woe to anyone or anything who tried to stop her. Wow, no wonder she's so unflappable. You know, maybe they don't need our help after all. No, it's not over yet. Looks like they've got some reinforcements coming in. Cease your fire. There's no need to increase our casualties any further. If they're fielding monsters, we might as well call in our own. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> My, they've certainly brought quite a few of those. They're boasting some impressive armor. Looks like they've been designed with integrated arts resistance, too. Hmm. What to do, what to do? You think we can really beat all these things? Well, I don't see another way out of this, do you? We need to hold this location until the Imperial Army's reinforcements arrive, no matter what. <laughs> Time to see if the Army's finest up-and-coming officer has it where it counts. Same to you, Miss A-Rank Bracer. My, my! You two really do make quite the dynamic duo. Shut, Shut up, Thomas! Thomas. <laughs> All right. Palestine and Nightheart are taking point. Let's give them some cover. Yes, sir. Now, let's see which parts have that arts-resistant shield. They certainly seem to be holding their own. Yeah, but look how many they're up against. And the enemy's still got strength to spare. But the instructors don't have anything to fall back on if the enemy gets the upper hand. Let's go. They need backup, and we're here to give it to them. Right. I'm not sure how much support we'll be able to provide them. At the very least, we should be able to keep one of those things busy. If we can give them that much more of a fighting chance, I'll do it. <laughs> that won't be necessary. What? Sharon? Allow me to handle things here. I'll be sure to give Lady Sarah and her colleagues the opening they need to clinch their victory. Huh? She's fast. I figured you'd show up sooner or later. Hmm. 
These new model engines certainly are quite the step up. I'm impressed. Still, all the power in the world doesn't mean much if you're all tied up. The pleasure of being bound, vulnerable, and exposed is a thrill like no other. Would you care for a little demonstration? I'd say you won't feel a thing, but that would be lying. So you finally dropped the act, huh? Looks like you've even picked up a few new tricks since our little dust-up two years ago. But I guess I wouldn't expect any less from Sharon Kruger, Ouroboros' enforcer number nine. Or should I just call you the Severing Chains? I'm currently on leave from that position. Right now, I'm but a humble maid in the service of the Reinford family. And no matter who's pulling the strings, anyone who tries to harm Lady Elisa or her friends will have to get through me first. That's fine by me. But I think you and I need to sit down and have a nice long talk after all this is over. I'll bring the snacks. <laughs> oh, look at them go! Are you just going to stand there and let the ladies run laps around you, Major? Of course not. I was just about to say we should focus our assault on one and hit it with everything we've got. Boys will be boys. Oh my, I feel like a mere mortal walking among titans. Okay, I think I got these guys figured out. Gonna nullify their art shielding capabilities. <laughs> you sure know how to show a guy a good time. Hey, Vulcan. Huh. You got some real fight in you. I can respect that. Still, there's only so much you can do against these soul dots. Let's see how long you can hold out, shall we? You're a military academy. Let's see how much fight you've really got in you. So, Elisa, just who the heck is Sharon? Don't ask me! I want to know just as much as the rest of you! Apparently an enforcer from Ouroboros. Well, that was a plot twist. I'm pretty sure my mother knows her background, but she never told me. Still, now they may have at least a chance of victory. But not a great one by any stretch. Still, we've seen those suits demolish battle tanks in just a few hits. And every second we hesitate. You're right. If we join the fight, their chances would be that much better. Sound. It's faint, but I can hear it. No way. But but that's coming from the opposite direction of the capital. Lammy! Uh, someone is flanking us. Well, they certainly don't seem to be holding back on our account. Are they trying to catch the town in a pincer attack? The instructors and Sharon have their work cut out for them with those five. Looks like we're the first and only line of defense then. Yeah. Get ready, everyone! Trista's east exit in sight now. No hostiles visible. <laughs> I hear they've rounded up quite the posse to defend this little town. But I'm sure they've got their hands full dealing with Vulcan.
Never mind that, though. We're not here for the town. C's instructions were to head straight for the academy and take all of the students captive. Roger that, Comrade S. <coughs> We've got a group of unknowns dead ahead. Hmm? My, my. What have we here? <laughs> and here I thought Vulcan would get all the fun to himself. But you didn't let me down, did you, Class 7? You managed to turn up every single time. Commencing operation. Our objective is to defend Trista's east exit. Aim for the one in the front and give it everything you've got. Understood. <laughs> How cute. You seriously think you can beat a Soldat's unit, do you? Well, if I spam him with S-Crafts, I can. It just wouldn't be sporting of us to attack at the same time, so... Why don't you soften them up a little first? Roger that. With pleasure. You've interfered with our cause for far too long. It's time you got what's coming to you. Let's see how long you last against this dragon! We have nothing to fear! Go! Alright, well, this is one of the final battles of the game, the Draken. He is pretty much resistant to everything, so don't even bother with fainting or anything. Just buff up and kill him as soon as you can. Oh, of course, Link up. I did give Laura dominations, so That's this that. should go by a bit quicker. He really is just an HP sponge. I might as well use one of the, these Zeran capsules. I mean, I have ten of them. Ha. You have my things. Okay. There you go. You'll be dead. That's that. This is probably the first time I actually shown off Azure Flame Slash, so Azure Flames, gather on my blade. It's just a blue variation of his old one. Looks like George was right about aiming for the joints. Well, one down, one more to go. <laughs> I should have expected that C's classmates wouldn't go down easy. <laughs> I recognize that grating voice. Scarlet? You're in there, aren't you? Oh, did you miss me? I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to play for mine. But I hope you haven't forgotten that I owe you for getting in my way at Gorelia Fortress. You managed to be one soul arts, but once is just luck. Let's see how you fare against a Spiegel. <gasps> that one's not like the others. It must be a command unit. So it has weapons the regular suits don't? Oh, believe me. You'll find that. Sadly, I doubt you'll survive the demonstration. But at least try to put up some token resistance. <laughs> Come on, then! 
And this is the fight against the... Well, they say it's the Spiegel unit, but I'm guessing they were going for Spiegel unit, which is the German word, word for mirror, and we'll see why later. Sorry about that, the live stream went As away for a second there. Alright, well once she puts up her physical shield, we can't really do much against her. And now she actually put up a magical mirror, which is even worse. So yeah, we cannot win this battle. This is why I told you to unequip the Angel Quartz. Okay, please, just get a turn. Ow. It reflected all our attacks. That's cheating! And this, children, is what we call reactive armor. Think of it as a protective field that the pilot can activate at will. They originally designed it to defend against tank assaults, but as you can see, that's not its only use. <laughs> this thing's specs must be out of this world. Reen? Hey, what are you... You're not. It's the same as when he fought the Viscount. No, don't! Don't do it, Reen! <laughs> so this must be that power of yours that C mentioned. I wonder if it'll really give you the strength to take down this Spiegel. If I go full force... It'll probably cost me my life. But if that's what it takes to keep them all safe, then that's the price I'll pay. Wayne, stop! You don't have to do this! Dost thou desire the power? What? If thee and I are of one accord, a covenant can be made. Thou hast but to call out my name. One in whom dwells the flame, Awakener. Th this voice... It looks like all the conditions have finally been met. S Celine, You can talk?! 
Yes, yes, quite eloquently too. But that's not important right now. Right now, you need to stay focused. You should know his name already. You saw it deep within the realm of the Great Shadow. Uh. She's right. I remember the name. It feels so familiar. Like I've always known. Heed my call. Valimar, the Ashen Knight! We are about to get Xeno gears up in this, this beast. Good oh boy! Yeah, you didn't expect mech battles in this series, did you? I don't think there is a roof, that an open roof at least not. What's happening to him? He just stopped moving. Celine, what's going on? Shh, let him concentrate. What? Did did Celine just The cat is talking! What's he doing with that fancy light show? Well, whatever. It's not going to save their skins this time. Playtime's over, brats. Unless you have a death wish, I suggest you get the hell out of What was that? Is the provincial army bombarding the town? Wait! No! Shit! Is that what C was talking about? Good thing this thing has autopilot. What? W what the? Reen, how did you... Is this one of the great knights from the ancient legends? So the tales are true. You see before you one of the divine knights, incarnations of the great power. The Ashen Knight, Valimar. Ugh, damn it! This wasn't in the plans. It shouldn't have been able to move yet. Um, Celine, why are you in here? How am I even doing this? It's like my body just knows. The moment you accepted the Awakener's Covenant, all the fundamental knowledge was granted to you. But you've got a more pressing issue to deal with right now. 
And this Divine Knight doesn't have a weapon yet, either. <sighs> that could be problematic. You're mine! <sighs> it evaded that attack like a trained duelist. Like Reen would. All right, I think I figured out the basics. Green! Is he inside that thing making it move? <laughs> That's awesome! I recognize that stance. The eight leaves one blade styles unarmed form. <laughs> You're just full of surprises, aren't you? Huh, looks like you might be able to handle this after all. The Eight Leaves One Blade School has a form we use if we're disarmed or have to fight without a weapon. And believe me, Master Ka Fai drilled it into me so thoroughly I could do it in my sleep. Sounds like you owe him a thank you next time you see him. Watch out! Here she comes! Let's see what we can do! Don't leave me unsatisfied now. All right, bitch, you've got this coming. Well, these are the Divine Knight battles. It's basically a one-on-one -on -one fight with another mech. It's kind of like rock, paper, scissors, where you see what the enemy has thrown out. It's more akin to the one-on-one -on -one duels in the Suicoden series. It's kind of like that. You just have to target a specific battle uh, uh, part of the unit, the head, the body or the arm. And for this stance, we actually want to go for the body. And we get the guaranteed crit and the link attack and the bravery point. How about this? For this stance, which I'm just going to refer to as the um, cheat sword stance, I guess, you want to target the head. And she's back to her normal stance, but just to get this over more quickly, let's use the Qui-Gon, which costs 40 CP and boosts our strength and speed. We also have Morning Moon, but it costs too much right now. It basically has a chance to evade encounter, and it decreases damage. We also have a move called Spirit, which um, restores our HP by 50% for 500 EP. But right now that doesn't really matter, since I doubt Scarlet will get me even down to hell. And for some reason they decided to scale your <laughs> HP and damage output on Valimar to Reen's current level. So if you're level 65, say... The next battle, not this one, could actually be basically lock based. I don't know why they decided to do that. But now that we have three bravery points, let's use destructive impact. And this is her third and final stance, the thrust stand, I guess you could call it. For this one you have to target her arms. should be all the backup they need at the west exit and then some. Damn. Whoa, whoa, hold up just a sec. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh no. <gasps> that voice. Something's coming.
Whoa. A blue knight? Then Valimar wasn't the only divine knight that was awoken. See? Am I ever glad to see you? The Azure Knight? So he was an Awakener all along. <sighs> I'll bet she's the one who guided him to it, too. Crow. Crow! Are you really in there? Sure am. Long time no see, Reen. Oh, well, not too long, I guess, seeing as we just had dinner together last night. But that all feels strangely distant now, you know? Another lifetime, almost. Why? Why are you doing this? Are you really the one who shot the Chancellor? And where did you even get that thing? It's thanks to the Imperial Liberation Front's planning that I wound up at the Academy in the first place. It was a nice spot to bide my time while we waited for our chance to take out the Chancellor. Gotta say, though, the whole school thing was a lot more fun than I expected. Almost makes me sad to leave it behind. But at the end of the day, I'm C. That's the real deal. The crow armbreast you've known all this time. He isn't real. He never was. Like hell he isn't! All the good times we had? Your friendship with Toa, and Angelica, and George? You seriously want me to believe that all of that was just a lie? That our hanging out, our field studies, even our concert meant nothing to you? I'm... Yeah, I'm afraid so. Crow, why are you doing this? Reinford made that for the Soldats units. I know it's not the kind you're used to, but it's the best you're gonna get right now. So, what do you say we settle things once and for all? A double saber. Just like C used. Then there's no room left for doubt. Crow really is C. I take no joy in this, but we can't have that ashen knife of yours getting in the way later down the line. So I'm afraid I'm gonna have to bust it up. Along with the Academy. As for you students and the staff, you'll be under our jurisdiction. So that's the plan if you win, huh? But what about if I win? <laughs> <laughs> if you win, I'll pay up the interest I owe you on that 50 Mira. Hell, we could even trade places. I'll babble on about friendship and dreams, and you can have fun for once in your life. You've got yourself a deal. But I hope you know what you just signed up for. Because the Bank of Reen has the highest interest rate on the continent. And if we'll be trading places, don't forget you'll have a mountain of work waiting for you back at the Academy. So one way or another, you'll be coming back with us, Crow! <laughs> You've got some real stones. I'll give you that. But sure, I'll agree to those terms. This is bad. Their will to fight is causing an enormous outpouring of mana! Alright, let's do this. Alright, Crow, it's time to beat some friendship into you. Or this stance you want to attack his arms. So that was not too much damage, that was around 10,000. We'll have to do something about that. Okay, so this stance, since he went um, grunted like ah, and he wanted to attack his body, 
there is a stance that looks almost ex exactly like this, but it's it will be different. So yes, Crow can link attack you. It's a chance. It's, it's not guaranteed, but he will build up um, bravery points just like you. So just count how, how many he has. Right right now he has one. Let's see. For now, let's just use the Quigong. All right, this should hit be his body. Right, let should me just quickly heal up. I want to use Quigong like next turn so I can get as much damage out of my rush as possible. Wow, I'm getting lucky with, with the link attacks. Usually he would have been at 2 right now, by now. Let's see, this should be his arms. Ooh, almost 50,000. Alright, now that we have gotten him, him down to a certain HP, he could do the other kind of stand, but this is his um, body one since I heard him grunt. Let's see, my Quigong is about to go away. Still no link attacks. Okay, if he says think you can handle this, it's his head. You have to attack his head right now. Do I really not get to show off his level, uh, his bravery points when he reaches 3? Come on, game. Okay, this is his final stand. It's his counter stand. Um, don't use normal attacks on him, he will counter it, but feel free to use Flame Impact, since it can't be countered. Alright, well, I guess it's time to finish this. That means... This can't be happening! <laughs> you really don't do anything halfway, do you? I thought I knew what you could do with your eight leaves training, but you're fighting on a whole nother level today. Good thing too, otherwise I'd never have stood a chance against you. Time to make good on our wager, Crow. You're coming back with us. You've been piloting a Divine Knight for one day. I've been using mine for three years. Did you think I wouldn't have a trump card to play? <laughs> Damn it! It's like I didn't even phase him. My head! 
When a Divine Knight is damaged, the Awakener shares their pain. Just as I feared, it was too early. Or perhaps it may have been too late. No! No, no you, you don't! don't. <gasps> Reen, are you all right? Guys, what are you doing? We are going to buy you time to get away from here. Run, while you still have the chance. I can't. I won't just leave you all here. You can, and you must. Heimdall's been occupied, and it's only a matter of time before we've got a full-blown civil war in our hands. They might have been caught off guard today, but the Imperial Army's full of elite soldiers. When the war starts, it'll be long and bloody. But it doesn't have to be like that. You and the Ashen Knight could change things. You could find a third way, like Prince Oliver was talking about. A way that doesn't bow to either faction. You can become the wind that changes the course of this conflict. You guys, I... No, I can't! You'll never make it against him by yourselves! Just run, please! <laughs> Just look at yourself. You're in no position to be worrying about us. Yeah! Just leave it to us! Once you've escaped, we'll go join the instructors, so don't worry. Take care of him for us, okay, Celine? Easier said than done. Prolonging current battle poses the risk of sustaining irreparable damage. Immediate tactical retreat is advised. That voice! Are you... Valimar? So, you've gathered enough power, have you? Well, we may have lost this battle, but at least we'll live to fight another day. Alright, get us out of here! As far away in Erebonia as you can take us! Command acknowledged. Charting course. Wait! No! That's my call to make! Be at ease, Reen. You will not bear this burden alone. I will stand and fight here as your sword. And I swear to you, this blade shall not be broken. Not before it returns to your side. Laura! And that, my friends, is the end of the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. It has been the, what, fourth Legend of Heroes game I've done on this channel. And my first Let's Play ever. It's been seven weeks and it's finally done. Oh boy, what a journey it has been. You know, even though it's not my favorite game in the series, in fact, it's probably my least as far as I have done these videos. Yeah. I probably put the Sky Games above it. I still had fun with it. The story, well, what should I say about the story? What is it about actually? About Reen and joining the Thor's military academy and going on field studies? With his classmates. And well, at the end we get this massive plot twist and this massive cliffhanger. Which was even bigger than Trace in the Sky the first chapter which already was a massive cliffhanger. Uh, it sure got me hyped for the second game in the series. And, well, if you have been keeping up with TGS, Trails of Cold Steel 3 is about the corner. 
It's actually coming out next week in Japan, so... The future is bright for this series, I would say. But who knows when we'll get a localization for that game. As far as I know, Cold Steel 2 is already in the making for PC over at Exceed. They are currently recording the voices. Which I have to say, the voice acting in this game was amazing. It even pisses me more off that they were pitching on the Steam forums about uh, there not being a Japanese voice acting. Oh well. The music in this game easily amazing as usually by the Falcon Stun Studio. Even if the, those one, that one company is trying to copyright claim it, the I Swear song, like the fifth time now. Eh, but that's for another time. The characters... Well... You know, I never really interacted with the NPCs in the Trails in the Sky game since most of the time you were traveling around the borough. But here the localized uh, cast back at Thor's Military ca Academy, like every the other classes and the instructors were really good. And I had really a lot of fun to talking to them. As far as the main team, class 7 goes, well, some of them are better than others, but I'm sure they'll be fleshed out later in the later games. My Probably my favorite character would be Crow, which is even more heartbreaking that he betrays us at the end, but... Oh well. As far as gameplay mechanics go, the battle system was solid. It surely was a lot more stream streamlined than the Sky games. It was a lot faster and more dynamic. They simplified the ordnance system, but I really didn't care about it. It made my life a lot easier, having to look at the Bracer um, guide notebook to figure out which spell required how much amount of lepid. It was really annoying at times. Oh, there is Crow. As far as fishing goes, I think they made it a bit more interactive. Previously you were just pressing a button and you caught the fish. Let's see here, what else? So yeah, I if I had to score this game I really don't like to put arbitrary numbers on an enjoyment of a game. But I would give it easily a 7.5 out of 10. I mean, if I would give Trails in the Sky uh, easily a 9.5, Trails in the Sky FC an 8, and third an 8.5. I think it's fair to say this is a 7.5. Um, as far as the crossbell games goes, well, we'll see how the translation will turn out and when it will turn out. Of course, there is the current translation, which was the leaked release, but I'm not planning on doing that one. As soon as the guys over at uh, the Geofront are done with it, I probably will start it as soon as possible. Unless, of course, um, Tales of Course Steel 2 comes out before it, which is probably pretty likely. Of course, they said it would probably be 2018 when it comes out. And Toshihori Kondo, well, you're a pretty amazing producer, I, a director or story writer. And of course, translation by Daniel Prescott and Ryan Thompson. If you want to follow the XC team on Twitter and Facebook and of course Hatsu, you can do that really. This song is pretty good, but I think I prefer the Sky Game sending teams, like I swear. And the credits are still going. But I think it's about to end. And one more time we get the Seal of Thorns. The story is still coming.
And of course, like usually, we get to save or clear save. For the next time, we'll be returning to the Legend of Heroes, Wells of Cold Steel 2. But for now, let me just quickly show a few things off that you get after the ending scene. You'll get a little nice little panning shot of the class. And Crow is of course still with us. Oh boy. Um, let me just quickly show what happens if you load the game. I already did it um, at the beginning. But instead of 5 points I now have 10. It increased by 5 if I really want to replay the game, which I don't think I would do. Um, the only thing that would be left is me to grind to level 80 for getting a better reward at the start of Trails of Cold Steel 2, but I don't think it's actually all that amazing of a reward, so I think I'm going to skip out on that and just start with level 70 and the max student um, rank. But that will wait, have to wait for, well, I would say 5 or 6 more months. And, well... I think it starts to say goodbye to class 7 and this let's play. Thank you guys all so much for joining me on this journey. Until next time, have a good one.